In this video, I'm going to show you how I built my crosscut sled. I hope you guys enjoy the video. The first thing I'm doing is cutting the pieces for my front and back fences. I'm cutting the pieces six inches wide so I can sandwich them together and make them stronger and straighter. So I'll glue and clamp those. I'm cutting them six inches wide because after they're glued together and, and set, I'm going to cut them down so that my back fence is four inches and my front fence is two inches. That way I'm only having to glue up wood once instead of twice. I don't want them all to be exactly the same length. So I'm cutting a stack to get a clamp at one end on my chop saw. Now I just need to glue my fence pieces together and let them sit overnight. I'm shooting a few nails into it just so it holds better. I've got the back plate for my sled cut and I don't have a joiner but I want this to be flat so I'm going to run it through the table saw here and square up these sides. And I'm going to cut down one side and flip it over cut down the other side and I'm only going to take about an eighth of an inch off because they're real close after I glue them together anyway. So I've got the bottom of my sled cut out of a piece of half inch ply. I've got my back fence glued together out of three pieces of half inch ply to make it absolutely straight. I've cut down my edges so it's, it's sits on here perfectly square and I've got my runner. The next part I'm going to do here is I only want my back fence to be four inches tall so I can grab onto it easily. So I'm going to cut four inches off this. This is six inches. That'll leave me a two inch runner for my front fence. So right now I'm going to split this in half. So I cut this sample runner when I was making my table extension and it fits down the slots perfect so I need to cut two more of these just like this. First thing I'm going to do is take this piece of hardwood here and cut it down to the width of my slots. And then I've, I'm going to cut it so the grain is standing up so if they ever get expansion they don't pinch in here. Once I cut the width down and I have it to the, the proper width, just like this one, then I'm going to take and I'm going to cut a channel out of the center here for these lips in the Ryobi. And then I'm going to split this in half for my two pieces. And I'm going to try to get two pieces out of this one piece of stock here. That come out perfect. It's just a hair tight in my miter slots that I cut into the table. But maybe a couple swipes of the sandpaper and this thing will be right on. Now I gotta cut my groove in here for these tongues that stick out on the right over. Figuring out the exact height on those. Luckily I made it sample piece when I started on this and it come out good so I've already got the measurements on that and I've set everything with my gauge here within a couple thousands. So I've got my piece done and now I gotta it's gonna be both my runners out of one piece so I'm gonna split this right down the center there where you see my mark and then I'm gonna fine-tune the height on the router table. So there's my two pieces. I cut that basically it was a hat channel. I cut it in half here. And that's gonna be my two runners. Now I gotta do is shave off the tops of them here, 
to the exact height I want so that they're not flush with the table but just sitting a hair below it. And I'm going to try and do that with my router table. When I've set my distance here, to about 5 sixteenths of an inch. Maybe a thousandth less. So I set my router table up, I slid my table saw guide over, clamped it down, I've cut a piece of wood here, and I'm going to run this through. And that's perfect. As I said, just below my tabletop, it fits right through my channel. That's exactly what I wanted. One more to do. All right, I've got my runners in here, set in my miter slots, and I put some spacers underneath them to lift them up to a little higher than the tabletop here. And I'm going to run a glue bead down them and then set my piece here. And I've set it so it's offset. So I've got two feet on this side of the blade and a foot on this side. Just so I've got room for stop blocks on this side if I ever need to. And I've already set my saw guide here to where it's square with the saw so I can butt right up to it. All right, with those glued up, what I'm going to do is set my piece in here, make sure it's square to the saw. And I've got this tiny square here that I'm using to line it up with the ends of the saw here. Once this sets up, I'm going to put some tiny screws in this and counter sink them flush just to make sure those don't ever move but the glue will get them in place and square alright so I've got my runners glued on the back here now what I need to do is, is counter sink and pre-drill these so I can put some half inch screws in here and I want them nice and flush so it doesn't stick out and rub the board and I would tell you right now after I got these on here and put it in, I didn't let it set enough time, so I had to pull them off and re-glue them again. But now they're on here straight. They took a little bit of sanding, some fine sanding on the inside edges. It, now it slides there perfectly. But it did take some sanding to get these to go straight. And, and you just run it in and out and kind of feel where it's catching at. And don't do a lot of sanding. All I did was take a sanding block with some fine sanding paper and counted maybe 10 passes over it. And then I smoothed the bottom just for extra. Now all I gotta do is pre-drill these and set my screws. I'm just taking the sanding block and make sure I don't have any burrs sticking up from the wood. And I don't hear any metal screw tops hitting my sandpaper. Alright, I've got this back plate here for this and I'm going to mount right on there. And I'm not going to do anything fancy with this. I just don't really feel the need to, but I do want to round the edges off of this thing just so it's more comfortable to hang on to. So I've got a half inch rounding bit I'm going to put in my router here. Well, I went to put in my rounding bit, and my hole in my router table was too small, so I had to cut a big enough hole for this. But I didn't want to leave. A giant hole in here 
So I pulled these parts off of the old crappy router table that I was going to throw away. And I took a Dremel here and by hand went through here real carefully and carved out an inset in this for these pieces. So now I have inserts for my router table. Now I haven't set up a permanent guide for the router yet so I'm just using my guide for the table saw. I slid it down here, locked it down and I put two pieces of two by on here and the Ryobi guide has holes through it to screw to so I screwed them down from the back just temporary and flushed it up so when I run this through here I keep a nice even edge on it. So I'm going to turn it on and do a test cut here and see how it comes out. Alright, now I got my back cut. I'm going to go ahead and bring my saw blade up through the wood here. And I want to cut right to this line. I don't want to cut all the way through. And I'm just going to cut a slot in the center here to square my back piece on. And then I'll attach the back piece. So what I've done is I've cut clamps all the way across the back of this. Because as straight as my back piece is, it probably has a bow in it that's a sixteenth of an inch. So I clamped it off and used a rubber mallet to tap it into place. So it's perfectly straight and flush with my bottom board. And then just to get it as accurate as possible, I'm going in here measuring from the edge of my square to the edge of the cut. 2364 it's within a 64th of an inch up there I'm gonna flip the square and check it from the other side just in case my squares out a little or the boards out a little on this side compared to that side so at 18 inches out it's within a 64th and that's measuring both sides I'm going to go ahead and countersink holes and put screws all the way down this thing. I may have to change them a little bit later once I do my five cut. But I think it's pretty close right now. Now for the small front one. This one doesn't really matter if it's exactly square because I'm not going to be cut against it. back piece, my front piece. Now all I need to do is cut all the way through this thing. Now I'm going to take a piece of plywood and I'm going to do a five cut where I cut five sides and then measure to see what the difference is just to see how far off I am. Now, I cut all the way, turning my square side or my cut side to the back every time. And I'm going to measure this last fifth piece. Which if I'm out of square, it's going to show it as five times as bad as what it is. After I calced it, I set this to it just to see what it looked like. That is literally what we're looking at. You can see a hair of light through the thing. It is damn near closed. Now I want to add a backer plate to this. Something to guard my fingers to tell me where to stop so I'm not coming through. And it's just something to reference me to tell me to keep my damn hands out of the way so I'm not sticking my hands up here. So these two pieces I'm going to glue right on the back here. I don't have a paint roller. I just use a piece of scrap roll. Wood scrap roller scrap wood to spread this glue out. I'll sand the edges off. I might even take a chisel and kind of chamfer the edges when it's done. 
that's it. This is a done deal. I got my back piece all glued on. I went ahead and took a chisel and chamfered the edges and sanded it down. And I love the way this thing works. I hope this video helps somebody out there.